there's a uh, there's an event that you do and have been doing now for uh, this our thirtieth thirtieth yeah, which is an amazing event. It for me should be you know the Sacramento tourism <laughs> reason to come to Sacramento. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Run to Feed the Hungry. Yeah, well, Run to Feed the Hungry started uh, actually from an idea with Father Madigan and some other volunteers uh, back in 1993. Our first year was 1994. I think they had like 768 participants. We're hoping for 30,000 this year. Uh, you know, the run is an amazing event. We are very lucky. It's been a lot of hard work. We're very lucky and blessed that that it's tied to our organization. We manage it. We fund it. Um but the community supports it. And it's such a family tradition. I mean, every year, at least one family, actually a lot more than that, comes up to me and says, hey, we have a new addition to our family. And it's a great, great grandparent with their kid, kids, kid, kids, kid, 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 that are now doing the run to feed the hungry. And, you know, I just think Father Madigan was brilliant in that when he said, we're going to do something on Thanksgiving day, most people said, you're crazy. No one will come out. Cause I mean, it's Thanksgiving. And he saw that's the whole point. And so I think, I think it's such a great, if, you know, if obviously if you're flying in, it's a little bit different, but if you're a Sacramentan and uh, it's, it's fairly convenient for you to come over here and do the event, get back uh, to your cooking and your, and your good vibes with your family. But uh, I think ultimately it was, it's a chance to pause for a second to understand that there's a lot of people in our community that, that aren't going to enjoy Thanksgiving and folks are doing their little part uh, to make sure our community is well-fed. My dad and I would do this every year and he lives in Texas now. And we've, I'm gonna be 40 in about three weeks. And he and I have done this since I was in my early twenties. And I was sitting drinking with my husband the other day. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to sign up. I haven't done it in a few years. And so it's kind of fun. We recognize how privileged we are. And we want to actually make an effort to, to give back to those who are less fortunate than we are. How often have you done it? Well, this is my first time. These are veterans and they've We've already done this about five years yeah. now. So, so it's a tradition that we have family that fly downtown and, and join us for this walk. So, yes. Where do they fly in from? They fly in from um, L.A., Arizona. This is my uh, 19th, 20th year. 20th, 20th year. I think I something think like that, yeah. yeah. So it's a family event every year? Yeah, we all live yeah, right yes. over here, so it's uh, in and out. Park. Yep. Yes. Yeah. How convenient. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. convenient. Why do you guys do it? I do it because we come out with our family friend group, which is them, these people. That's why we're all here. I don't know. It's our like time to all spend together and see each other after especially now that we're all in college, that so we don't see each other that often. We get to come home and spend more together. And Run to Feed the Hungry is, is also really about community. I mean, community in so many different ways. So community in that uh, the entire community really comes out. Almost 30,000 people um, registers, uh, pays money uh, and funds to the organization to be able to do this. Um, I think community in that that individual event raises enough money uh, to feed about 450,000 people, uh, 450,000 visits. Wow. So you got to figure that, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's quite uh, a, a lot of people uh, and community in that, you know, I think that there's folks that recognize um, that this is a, uh, a, a really terrible situation uh, and that they can do something little about it. And uh, so that platform uh, that, that we get as, as uh, the run to feed the hungry allows us to talk about these issues and allows folks to come together uh, and support it. So I'm standing on a corner in the first mile talking to one, one of our law enforcement officers who are keeping control of the crowd. How has the crowd been today? Good morning. The crowd is very happy and energetic today. I've been with the police department for 31 years, and I've done it probably almost every year except for the pandemic. So check off two years, I think we canceled. So by today's crowd comparison to what you've seen historically, what's it look like? Well, I was just told by the lieutenant, this is the biggest turkey run in the United States at about 30,000 people is what we're expecting. That's incredible. And it's an unruly crowd, right? Exactly. They're 
running in the middle of the street and causing traffic delays. Wild turkeys. Right, exactly. Exactly. Now everybody's having a good time. You got a lot of kids out here, folks with their pets, and yeah, it's fun. Well, it's a, it's a cool thing. Sacramento has the largest Run to Feed the Hungry in the nation and the world. I mean, if you really want to get technical with it. And it's a, it's a, it's a great community event that raises money for a good cause. And it doesn't hurt that you have the neighborhood that brings out its cheer and its cocktails for everyone to enjoy. My dad and I started doing this Run to Feed the Hungry because when I was in my early 20s, we didn't have a lot of money and we would utilize the food banks. So we thought it was something I would really get into and care about. How many years have you done the event? Oh, well over 15. It's a great event. And why do you do it? Uh, it gives us something to do Thanksgiving morning. It feels like it's a big sense of community when you get out here with all the other people from Sacramento and all of their families, and everybody's having a good time. So what better way to start your day? So uh, another great thing about, about the Run to Feed the Hungry is, is tradition. Uh, there, I mean, I could speak all day long about the tradition of the event, but, you know, you have businesses that years ago um, developed a team just as a camaraderie piece, and they, they're doing it now every year. Uh, you know, we're printing their name on their shirt, and, mm -hmm. and they're really enjoying that. We have family tradition, uh, and we have neighborhood traditions now. So we actually have teams uh, in the Run to Feed the Hungry uh, that have one street block that they all join together, one neighborhood that that is joined together with various last names, uh, tradition in that we have, you know, folks that actually fly in now from all over the United States to visit their family on that weekend so they can go to the event. So, you know, year over year, that that is growing. I have to believe that those three things that we talked about are, are why the Run to Feed the Hungry is so successful. You have to explain what this is. Well, I didn't have time to do my feathers. And you are? And it's early in the morning. Uh, explain in detail, because this is for a podcast. Oh, so what uh, the the what you're missing without the visual is that I'm wearing a crocheted turkey cap, and the turkey's feathers are in hair rollers. So it's early. It's cold. It's the best I could do. Oh. And... Why are you guys here? So uh, the Sabas have lived in this house for more than a decade. And um, we're sort of passive recreationists, right? We're not interested in running a 10K, but we're very supportive of everybody that wants to do it. So the company is Dr. Greenhouse. We're um, HVAC consultants here in Sacramento. And um, this is our company fundraiser event for the year. So we put together a team. It's maybe a little less about the actual running and walking, more about supporting the community, the food bank, and uh, perhaps some mimosas and Bloody Marys, I, you know. Um, so the costume just sort of add to our enthusiasm for the event. And we're pretty sure that some of these people run faster, maybe to get away from us, maybe just because they feel our spirit. No, I've done it every year for the past 10 years, actually. Congratulations. Yeah. And why are you here today? I organized a team for my daughter's school, and so there's about 20 of us here. And what's the name of the school? Camellia Waldorf School. Yeah, it's a great school. Small school. We got about, you know, a big group of parents and kids here to enjoy the day and contribute to our community. It's a family tradition. We've been doing it since 2005 and the opportunity to help those that will not get a meal, not only this year, but, or this day, but every day. The thing that I wanted to share, I'm, I'm so excited just wanting to chime in on this yeah. is because we've done the run with all our kids several times, just depends on who's where, if anybody's in town or how they're in town. Uh, we have one resident who's been doing it now probably five or six years in a row since he's been here. And it's, an amazing experience. It's an amazing experience just as a general participant. And I think I've done it about 15 times. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as some of you know, I used to run a group of radio stations here and I know we supported the, you know, the run yeah. and the years that we were there, it was like, can we beat the year prior? Can we beat the year prior? Will this be a record? And many of the times it was. And if I'm not mistaken, just last year set another record. 30 thousand twenty nine six okay <laughs> so we're almost there we're almost I, there. I knew it was really really close because really, i really remember close. everybody talking about it 
And it's just such an incredible experience to see that many people, some in costume, everybody is having a great time. It's it, th There's nothing negative about it unless you wanted to win and you came in second, third, or fourth, which there is a competitive element to yeah. it in the run as well, uh, both the uh, the 5K and the 10K. So, and the times are incredible that some of our runners are producing oh, absolutely. For, these, uh, for these 5 and 10K runs. In terms of the run to feed the hungry itself, is there anything that you've seen over the course of your 18 years there in leading the organization that's like it anywhere in the country? There are a few. Um, the I would say the, the neighborhood and the weather isn't comparable. Uh, there's a few big ones, and in, in, in if I remember right, there may be one in Texas and one in New York. Oh, not Texas, please. Yeah, <laughs> but it's but it's it's uh, it's definitely the largest. Um, I think we are meaning ours. Ours, yes. I think we're blessed with a what a beautiful community uh, that we're running through with all the lovely trees and the colors, um, but the weather. I mean, gosh, I, I so I've I've been involved in the run since 1996, so two years after it started. And it's really only rained on us a couple of times. I mean, literally. And it, it it's only rained on us once when the gun went off. So, I mean, that's- I've been there on those rainy okay. ones. Okay. So, uh, when we've been there setting up at early in the morning, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't think there's anywhere like it um, and for a combination. And, and, as, and like you said, there's, I could go, the stories I could tell you of little happenings that happened during that day are, are, uh, are pretty heartwarming. And there's uh, like you said, there's just a lot of people there having a good time, but it, it's just the right vibe. It's mm -hmm. absolutely perfect. And share. If you're a nonprofit with an interest in participating in an episode, you can reach us at info at multipointstrategies.com. The Nonprofit Podcast Network is a production of Multipoint Content Strategies and is recorded and edited by Hear Me Now Studio.